I'm Satine Phoenix, and this is Larry Hamilton, and you're watching us on Follow Me and Die. Hello, I'm Larry, and welcome to Follow Me and Die. On today's episode of Roll20 for the Absolute Beginner, we'll discuss how to handle adding a default character sheet for a game that doesn't have one already built into Roll20. And finally, we'll end with what happens when they finally add a character sheet for your game and you go in and change the settings to use that character sheet. For this demonstration, we will use the Maze Rats character sheet. It's a much simpler system with three attributes, strength, dexterity, and will, an attack item, an armor item, a health slot, name, level, and experience points. To begin, let us review the settings for the default campaign we created for this video series. As you can see, under Character Sheet, we have none. When you click on a token, various items that are affected will be the bars at the top and the gear at the bottom. When there is a Character Sheet associated with it, You can see that we can easily add attributes or abilities. To add an attribute, you click the Add button. You have to delete the default word Untitled to type in the ability or attribute name that you desire. I'll make a cut here so you don't have to watch me enter all these. Now that we have all these entered, there are options that show up to the right of the maximum. Options for moving and deleting. If you click the X, it will delete, but you can easily add it right back in. If you want to change the position, click on the button with the three lines and it will allow you to change the position. I had an issue in another campaign where if I didn't do things just right it wouldn't store and remember the position, but that does not seem to be an issue. Perhaps it is a browser specific issue as I had that issue on Chrome and this is Firefox. So let's enter in some scores for our attributes and see how that affects the token. You'll notice that on the health line, I'm able to enter the max health. When there is no injury, the max and current will be the same. Here, I'm showing you that the token is associated with the character sheet. When you remove that association, you lose some of the items on the screen. When the token is associated with the proper character sheet, you'll have in the drop-down, which is not showing here for some reason. Here I selected Health, and you'll see that it brought in the Health from the character sheet. And on the other bar, I selected Armor, which it pulled in from the character sheet. Now let's look at the Advanced tab. Here we'll have the ability to enable the player and other players to see the bars and status effects. Here you see the health bar and if we change the health at the token and save it, when we go to the character sheet we'll see that the health has changed. Likewise if you change the health on the character sheet it will also change on the token. On the abilities section on the right half of the sheet we have a check mark that allows us to go in and edit or add a new ability. First we name it, then we can fill in the details of that ability. It can be 
plain text or it can be a macro. We'll come up with a clever name to describe it here. Once you've entered it, you have to go back up to the check mark and click it to save it. Other buttons allow you to move it if there was more than one or to delete it. Once we have saved our ability, there are two check boxes that allow us to add to the macro bar, which will show down at the bottom, or add to the token actions, which only works when the token is selected. You'll notice when we select the token, it appears at the top of the screen. Click the button like you would the macro button on the macro bar, and it runs the macro. I did a big no-no here. I'm working on the actual character sheet. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to save it as a template. You always want to work from a template. So before you start adding characters, you want to make a template for your characters. So you go into the edit. You choose duplicate. Once you've duplicated it, you go to the one that is duplicated, select it, and you may change its name. I recommend that you consider making a separate character sheet to use for your monsters and creatures. Just duplicate it, change its name to indicate that it is your master for your monsters, and then before you make a new monster, always duplicate the template. I also like to make a copy of my template and archive it. That way, if I do make the blunder of making a creature or a character out of my master template, I have a fallback. Because we have a monster template, if monsters have attributes that are different from characters, you can add how many ever attributes are needed to describe the standard monster. Likewise, with attributes, you can add those. An additional thing you may want to consider is if you decide to build an entire bestiary or bestiary, depending on how you prefer to say that, make a template for your standard. So have a base goblin, a base orc, a base giant, and then you can make variations from there. I'm a big fan of Metamorphosis Alpha, so I ran a Metamorphosis Alpha campaign. Roll20 at the time did not have a character sheet, so I built one similar to what I showed you previously in this video. I want to see what the new character sheet they recently added looks like, but before I go making changes, I'm going to copy my campaign. Once I copy it, I'm going to go in and change the character sheet, but first I want to show you what the sheets I made look like. In Metamorphosis Alpha, characters can be humans, and they have slightly different abilities. So this character sheet is specific to humans. Notice I didn't add abilities, only attributes. Mutants, characters can be mutants. Obviously their mutations make them different from humans. Again, no attributes. So now let's change the character sheet for my Menomorphosis Alpha campaign to the one provided by Roll20. We'll go into the settings for the campaign, come down to the character sheet template. If you type the first few letters of what you're after, it'll show. You can get a preview of what it looks like. It looks pretty fancy. And then save your changes. So now when we look at the base human character sheet, we'll see that the base sheet has a new tab, looks pretty fancy, but the original information is still there. Now when we go to look at an existing character and look at the new tab, none of the information has pulled in that we entered previously. So this is something important to keep in mind, that when you switch to an official character sheet from one you built yourself, Either you or your characters, your players, will have a lot of changes to make to be able to use the new facilities provided by the official sheet. Thanks for watching today. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for other topics for the Absolute Beginner, 
please share them in the comments below. And if you're looking for more advanced topics on using Roll20, check out Cody Lewis' YouTube channel, Taking 20, and his Roll20 Master Series. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. You can find me on social media via my blog, G+, Facebook, and Twitter. I also have a Cafe Press store if you'd like to buy one of the shirts or hoodies with my logo on it to help support the channel. Please do so. All the links for those are down below. And just remember, with my sites, you don't have a choice because it's follow me and die.